Fuel pressure gets lots of attention, but how does flow factor into that equation? Well, the two go hand in hand. We might as well talk about that today so you can pick out the right fuel pump. Let's get after it. So flow and pressure, while those two terms may seem really similar, they represent very different and distinct aspects of how fuel is delivered in your system. But before we get really in depth with that, I just wanna let you know, we're not gonna talk about anything application specific really on this one. We just wanna talk about the differences between the two. We'll define it, we'll give you some uh, uh, things to look at and things to consider when you're looking at building your fuel system so you can pick out the right pump. So what is fuel flow? Flow is just the rate, the amount of rate that the fl fuel flows through the system. If you look at this pump by Edelbrock, it says it flows 160 gallons per hour. That one's 120. These smaller ones in the back flow 30 gallons per hour and 38 gallons per hour. Now, typically these mechanical pumps are 100, 110, 97, somewhere in there. And when you get to these electric pumps, this happens to be a 255 uh, TI pump, so it flows 255 gallons per hour. But what does that mean? Does it mean it always delivers that amount of flow? The answer is no. We'll talk about that here just really quickly. We've talked about that quite a bit when we talk about pressure, specifically on all the carburetor videos we've done. We've talked that the Edelbrock likes a certain amount of pressure. The Hollies are a little less sensitive to pressure, but certainly they have a range that they work in. And fuel pressure is just the amount of force that's exerted onto the fuel system as a restriction is placed in the system that causes the pressure to go up and the flow to go down. That's a really important thing to remember. When you raise the pressure in something, you're going to restrict how much flow goes through the, the system and you're going to need to overcome that resistance with pressure to get through the system. So those are two really critical terms, but it's like anything else. The, the pressure side of things is very important, but the flow also dictates how much power uh, you're going to make within a certain application. So now we have those two defined. Let's talk about some things a little bit more specifically. Now pumps are application specific and that's why there's so many choices in fuel pumps. Again, we talked about, you know, the gallons of per hour, all these, um, and whether you're running just a simple mechanical pump off the engine or you want to try an electric style pump, you have to be really careful about the flow and the pressure data. And most really good fuel companies will give you a chart to help you explain that. So let's take a look at one of those right now. Now this happens to be from the Walboro website and it's for a 255 liters per hour, rated a little bit differently, but you still need to take that into consideration. Obviously, uh, there's more liters in a gallon, uh, but we'll talk about that, all that conversion at some other time. But this is a really good indication of what this means when you talk about flow in the liters per hour and pressure. So if we look at this a little closer, this line here represents the pressure. As the pressure goes up, the liters per hour drops. And that is a really key piece to understanding this whole situation. So let's say we're at uh, around 58, 60 PSI here. We'll talk about that four to seven PSI uh, down here for a carbureted application. But so if you look here, let's look at the carbureted side and you go up, when you look at that pump, it's now flowing a little bit different in the amount of flow, which is that line right there. But there's two lines on the flow uh, chart up here. Reason being is if you change how many volts you run through it, it will vary how much flow is. If you look down here, if this is all legible, you can see that that's the black line, the black line here at, at 12 volts. But if you jump that up to 13 and a half, your flow significantly increases. Why is that? Because that flow in the higher amperage is allowing it to overcome the pressure a little bit more. Add more voltage to it, you're going to be able to flow a little bit more gallons per hour. Now you have to be careful, you can't just throw whatever amount of voltage you have and expect the pump to survive. So as long as you stay within the parameters of what that pump is rated for and what can handle, then you will get those flow numbers. Same down here when you get over here where we talked about the EFI side and you draw a line up, you can see that that flow is certainly significantly different. It drops off quite a bit. That will tell you how much horsepower you're going to be able to support with that application 
the certain fixed PSI or PSI range you're going to operate in and the amount of voltage that you're going to run through it. Very critical. Always try to find a fuel pump company that will give you this chart because it is extremely important data for you to understand how much flow you're going to get at that pressure and at the PSI that you set it at. Now, a mechanical pump's just a little bit different. It's on a fixed gallons or liters per hour, so you really can't alter that too much. Whereas with an electric pump, again, changing the voltage will allow you to change exactly how much flow you're going to get. So it's very important to understand that the more pressure you need to run, the flow is going to get reduced, and you need to select the pump that will give you the best gallons per hour or liters per hour, however you want to factor it, to make sure that your application gets the right amount of fuel. Now, the pressure regulator is obviously a very key piece to that. On Again, on a carbureted side, and we talked about uh, the pressure being fairly low at that 4 to, to 7 PSI range. Um, again, your flow is going to be a little bit different and not, not nearly as critical, I don't think, on the carbureted side because your pressures are so low. It doesn't affect the, the flow as dramatically. On the EFI side, on an injector, when you have to fire it at, at a much higher pressure, um, yeah, you're going to alter the flow. And this is where it gets really critical. But we're also going to uh, uh, assume that on the carbureted side, it's going to be very critical as well. And why is that? Well, let's take a look at these two pumps here for Metalbrock. Now, these are off the shelf uh, from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Uh, they're pretty, fairly easy uh, to get a hold of. And it's a very popular pump because it's very simple, very easy. Uh, it's hot in the ground, key on hot, and uh, uh, you get the uh, amount of, uh, uh, or you get a fuel pump that will help support your system. Here's the problem with these pumps. They're really, really, really good. One, if you keep a good filter on it and keep all the garbage out of it. But two, you have to look at two things. Now, remember we talked about the uh, pressure. This certainly fits in with the 4 to 7 PSI that the Edelbrock carburetor likes to run in, and really the Holly as well too, and that's rated at that 12 volts. It says it will support up to 410 horsepower. Now, I don't disagree that it probably will support maybe up to 400 horsepower, but here's the real key to that. This is only capable of that 38 gallons per hour at the 12 volts. This is very, very critical to understand because, again, if you're running anything a little hotter, and honestly, not to knock the Edelbrock folks, but I don't know that I would run that style of pump because the gallons per hour are so low at 410 horsepower. Normal street driving, cruising, yes, this pump would be just fine. If you're going to the track, if you're going nitrous, if you're going anything else uh, that's more aggressive driving, you're going to want more gallons per hour. So very, very good example here. Write PSI and don't get just looking at that one number. You have to look at the gallons per hour. This other pump is even more uh, crazy when you look at it. It is for a smaller uh, style of carburetor like a Stromberg, a potentially a lawnmower or something like that a small engine type of deal really good pump again if you keep it filtered two to three and a half psi as all as it's capable of at that 12 volts but only 30 gallons per hour so you need to be careful if you're going to select that style of pump from an auto parts store to to get you home or or to be as uh used on your cruiser one you're not going to have enough uh, psi to feed the carburetor but the other side of it is it drops the gallons per hour down quite significantly. So it's something to be very, very conscious of when you're looking for a fuel pump. Again, these are great pumps for the situation that you put it into. Now, I'll show you what that looks like graphically because, again, I think it illustrates a little bit better. Well, garden hose, very, very simple. When you have no nozzle or anything on the end and you turn it on, uh, it is flowing unrestricted. Uh, at its full volume based on the size of the hose, obviously, and the restriction or the opening in the end of it. But it's free-flowing. There's not a lot of pressure to it. When you add pressure, the water comes out at a much slower volume, reduces the flow, but the pressure spikes up. Very, very easy to see and very easy to understand that when you add a restriction, like the regulator does, and increases the pressure, 
then it is going to give you the pressure that you want, but it's going to reduce the amount of flow that comes out the end of it. Very simple, very easy to understand, but the fuel system is exactly the same way. The higher the pressure that you need, the lower the flow volume is going to be. When you're thinking of a fuel pump, think of it more in terms of flow. A pump does not put out a certain amount of pressure. Unless, of course, if that pump has an internally regulated system that doesn't allow it to go to a certain amount of pressure before it bypasses it and sends it back to the tank or somewhere else within the system. There are pumps like that. All of the pumps here are, are not that way, but you have to be careful with that. So just think of it in those terms. It puts out flow not pressured. That's why when you look at these pumps here, it will tell you that it is a gallons per hour, uh, even has it here, but nowhere on here does it say that this is a, uh, a, you know, 60 PSI pump or a, you know, 10 PSI pump. That is strictly going to be up to the regulator to decide how much we're going to add to the system and what to regulate the pressure at from, and then the pump is there, based on the voltage that we're giving it, is going to help determine how much flow it gets to it. So they have to go together. The two have to, two pieces of that puzzle have to kind of work together. Uh, but it's very, very critical to understand that always think of the pump in the amount of flow that it puts out, not how much pressure that it puts out. Another question that I get us very frequently is why do I always recommend that you run a fuel pressure regulator on a carbureted system when you're running a mechanical style pump that is at a fixed PSI. Again, don't think in those terms. It is limited by that and the curve of the, the fuel flow of it is limited at, at that PSI, but the regulator is going to help you dial that in. Typically these pumps, like this one I think is capable of around seven PSI. We've done videos on that before to show uh, what kind of PSI we've gotten out of some stock uh, off-the-shelf pumps that, that are significantly different than what the manufacturer says, and having one more adjustment point in the system is always critical. But is that the biggest reason? And I will tell you that I don't think so. I always explain it in those terms that give yourself that ability to tune it, but if you look at every single uh, drawing that I have on my website. I'll leave the link down below so you can find these or they're free. You can download them if you need them, but I will always include the regulator in it because again, the fuel pump is the flow. The regulator is going to tell us how much pressure we're going to feed the carburetor. If you also look at some uh, manufacturers, they will rate a pump at up to a thousand horsepower, we'll say on a carbureted engine. And pres presumably that's between that five and eight PSI. When you look at that same pump on an EFI system though, they will say that it only supports up to 800 horsepower at 43 to 60 PSI. Because that pressure reduces the flow so much, that's the reason why you see the drop in the horsepower it'll support. It's not that that pump isn't capable of doing it. It's when you add the pressure, like we saw on the chart from that Walboro pump, uh, your flow goes down. If flow goes down, that's not, not as much horsepower that you're going to be able to support. Now, is it does that same way with every single pump? No, that's why knowing the data from the manufacturer is critical. Understanding the voltage is very critical, um, how much it's going to flow. Um, and making sure that you, you know, get find the right one that's right for you. The other side of that is that does that mean that if you have a, uh, a TI style pump or a wall burl or even a knockoff style pump, which I don't recommend you buying on electric fuel pump for obvious reasons when this is uh, submerged in fuel, will a 255 gallons per hour or liters per hour pump always flow the same amount of volume? And the answer to that's no. It's going to be different, again, when you have different voltage. So, again, you have to always think in those those multiple terms here, and I know it gets a little bit confusing uh, at times because you just want to look at, okay, well, it puts out 160 gallons per hour, or I'm going to get it's limited on the pressure. It should be fine. Have to look at it all those terms. And, again, the more pressure, 
even if you're just uh, talking about from maybe you're tuning and you're going from 5 to 6 PSI, that little bit of increase in pressure is going to drop the flow down a little bit. So a lot of things to consider there, but it's really cool when you think about it of all of the different ways that you can control how much fuel gets to the carburetor or the injector just by how much pressure you're putting at it. So really when you boil all this down, it's very, really very simple when you're selecting a pump. Does it have the amount of flow at the PSI that I needed to deliver to whatever it is you're working on, carburetor or EFI, and will that support the amount of horsepower that that engine wants to or needs to make? And once you have all those three things lined up, then you can select a pump, you can select your regulator, and you'll be good to go, and you'll have a nice, happy living engine. But certainly, if you had a 500 horsepower engine, and you selected that 120 or 160 gallon per hour pump, and you know you you were trying to make that power, it's going to perform a lot differently than a 38 gallon per hour at that four to seven psi. So. Just keep those things in mind. And when you go out and look for a pump, again, I would always recommend find a manufacturer that shares that flow data with you. That way you can verify how much you're going to get. And really, at the end of the day, if you're not quite sure, just pick up the phone and call. Send them an email, whatever uh, delivery meth method they have to get back to you. It's You can't ever hurt yourself. Call the manufacturer directly. Don't rely on a retailer to tell you that and suggest it because they're just going to sell you what they need to. But Get to with the manufacturer and tell them exactly what they're building and, and they'll help you figure out pump regulator and, and make sure you get amount of flow that you need to support horsepower. So if you have any questions on this one, don't hesitate. Please leave them down below. Again, if you want to download any of these charts off the website, uh, the link will be in the description. All that stuff is free. Uh, the wall borrow one, I'm not going to put it in there, but you don't need that. So uh, anyway, if, again, if you got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, very, very application specific. But all of these different style pumps uh, really could support the same type of thing, depending if we're trying to get to whatever horsepower level. So anyway, I hope you got something out of that one. Uh, Pressure is important, but really it's the flow that we're talking about and really the, the big number. Just like we talked on camshafts with uh, everybody wants to talk about lift, lift, lift. I've got 700, you know, lift on my camshaft. It must be awesome. No, I need to know what the duration is. That's what I really want to know. Think of that in those same terms with a fuel pump. You need to know what the flow is and uh, the, the pressure. You can regulate that to what you need. So anyway, I hope you got something out of this one, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.